I would like, obviously, for them to be found, um, and um, for me to be cleared of this. <laughs> like, uh, like seriously, like just fucking slap me on the ground, and it's like, uh, yeah, you're on the rest of the homicide. Great, thanks, guys. Shit. This man talking is Robert Leeming. He can be seen laughing and giggling in the video even though he was asked about the disappearance of his girlfriend and her 22-month-old baby. He claims not to know anything about their disappearance which was later confirmed not to be true. His love for media attention was what finally brought him down. Let's take a look at the story. Hello and welcome to Twisted Crimes. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. Both Robert Leeming and Jasmine Lovett were experiencing trying times when they first met. In the midst of Robert's loneliness following his divorce in 2017, Jasmine, who had split up with her boyfriend not long after the birth of their daughter, was introduced to him. Both parties were experiencing a sense of helplessness and vulnerability. Jasmine was struggling to make ends meet while also trying to be a good mother to her daughter, and Robert was dealing with the fact that he couldn't see his kid. When they first connected on a dating app, it seemed like two puzzle pieces that fit together flawlessly. Jasmine experienced housing problems when they first got together, leaving her homeless. Robert recommended she rent a room in the house he was living in at the time. He watched her kid when she needed it, and she gave him the emotional support he required as they fell into a comfortable pattern. They didn't keep up the facade of being a couple for very long before their relationship grew stale. That was prior to the abduction of Jasmine and her kid in April 2019. Jasmine was close to her mother and sister and communicated with them frequently. She had agreed to meet them for lunch on the day she vanished, but she never did. Since being a single mother was challenging, her mother and sister assumed she was taking a break. But her sister went to the station and reported her missing after not hearing from her for nearly five days. Jasmine's home was the starting point for the investigation. The police visited but got no reaction to their knocking, but after noticing a steady flickering of light coming from the inside, they stayed persistent. As a result, Robert opened the door while highly inebriated. The more questions the police asked Robert, the more suspicious they became as a result of his answers. Of course. How's it going? Says so she's with her sister. Hmm. Well, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Alright, well, we're just gonna take a quick look around. We need to have a look. So, sir, you're Robert? Yeah. Okay. So. I mean, that's the door. I was sleeping. I sleep with plugs in and. Hey, well, we've been here for hours and hours and hours now, hey? Uh, banging on your door and. Ringing on the doorbell. Calling your phone. Door. Well, that's the reason that we're here. Why do you think we're here? Because the family's calling us, saying we haven't heard from our daughter and our sister. That makes sense. Okay, that makes sense? Yeah. Okay, why does that make sense? Because I haven't heard from her either. <coughs> so, do you guys get in some sort of argument? Well, not that you're aware of. Like, you're not making a whole lot of sense no, to me, like, guy. Like, like, I don't know what. Sorry, I'm still getting my bearings here. So she's not with her family. But she did threaten to move out. I don't know, like three weeks ago, we got into a, a tizzy. She, she threw a bunch of my stuff out, food, stuff like that. I had a disagreement about that. Um, but nothing to like, concern me. Nothing that would concern you, okay? Like, I mean, I've, I've, had, I've had people living with me before, and they move out. You know, here right, but this isn't just like a roommate, this is your girlfriend. Okay. She's more of a roommate than a girlfriend? Yeah. Okay, 
so the last time that you saw Jasmine was when? Okay. And at that time, you guys were A-OK -okay or fighting, or what was the status? I would say in the air, judging by what obviously has gone down. So what makes you believe that she's with her sister? She told me that, that she was going to go and spend Easter with them on Tuesday. I was talking about it because I don't have my son, so, you know, it's kind of depressed about that. And just, you know, drink, not drinking a lot. But the weekend, because I've pretty much been on my own, right? Okay. Sticking, but that doesn't... What's the saran wrap for? Just privacy. Huh? Privacy. Did you see the note on the door? I do now. Okay. I'm gonna go make the call to mom and try and get some more info. The next day, when the police returned with a search warrant, Robert had barred the entrance door and wedged the door of the master bedroom shut. Although they lacked the evidence to support it, the police now thought Robert was even more guilty than before. Robert had been raised by a strict military father. Due to the nature of his father's work, they had to travel, but they eventually made a small family home in a less populated rural area of England. Robert, who was more of a loner than his two brothers, and his two brothers all had very quiet childhoods. However, even when Robert began showing a love with collecting knives at age seven, the Leeming family paid little attention to his behavior at the time. Robert grew up in England but met someone online who lived in Canada, so he decided to relocate to Canada to start a family with his new partner. When Robert's wife revealed her pregnancy and gave birth to their son, his life was the picture of contentment. However, when his wife requested a divorce in 2017, citing emotional abuse, things weren't quite as perfect as they appeared. She said that she had experienced emotional abuse, gaslighting, and continual neglect. By the time of their separation, Robert had started drinking and smoking too much, and he had also made it a point to add to his collection of knives and weapons, which made his wife fear for her and their child's safety. Robert lost custody of their son after their acrimonious divorce. He returned to dating apps when loneliness began to consume him once more, a location where he ultimately met Jasmine. However, as soon as he moved in with her and started seeing her, the same troubled emotions that had led him to lose control during his first marriage started to surface once more. This time, he decided to leave Jasmine alone and return to his dating apps. Despite his discretion, Jasmine was aware of what he was doing, which resulted in an unpleasant confrontation between the two and the end of their relationship, although this conclusion was kept from the public eye. The police detained him in the suspicion of his missing girlfriend and baby but was later let go. Robert did what he did best when the police freed him from detention due to a lack of evidence. To get a drink, he went to a bar. Can you tell us about um, your experience with this in the last two days? Yeah, I can. I was uh, arrested by the uh, tactical team. Um, it's pretty extreme <laughs> from my experience. Um, of course, I've never experienced this before, and um, they're, they're still investigating. So, how long were you in, in police custody? 24 hours, I think. So, what have you been doing in the, in the meantime? Just been here. <laughs> Literally. So, was she living there at the time? Correct. Okay, so, you own the house. Correct. Um, she she and is a tenant. Is a tenant, along right. with Aaliyah. With her daughter. With her daughter, yes, correct. Okay, so that was the extent of your relationship. She rented from you. Correct. And you shared the home. Correct. Um, was there any romantic involvement between the two of you, or is there? There was initially, but um, towards the end, no. How, how would you characterize your relationship with Jasmine? Good. I mean, were you a boyfriend, girlfriend, or? No, just, just good, good friends. Nothing alarmed me until, of course, I got arrested. <laughs> so. What happens with you right now? Um, I'm just gonna wait until I get a phone call to say that I can go home. <laughs> um, How are you feeling throughout all of this? 
I'm traumatized, of course. Is there anything else that you want to add to all this? Yeah, if anyone sees her or Aaliyah, Jasmine or Aaliyah, please, you know, let the authorities know. Let the authorities know? How about he let the authorities know where he put her? The abduction of Jasmine and her daughter, as well as Robert's involvement, was already making headlines at that point. Soon after leaving the pub, he was surrounded by individuals asking to interview him. Mowed me down. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, like seriously, like just fucking slap me on the ground and it's like, uh, yeah, you're on the rest of the homicide. Great, thanks guys. How long have you lived here? And you have a son, right? Like five years. Yeah. And so, sorry, did your, do you know if she had a boyfriend or anything or? No, 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 no. it was just like, just, just, just nothing. How long has she lived with you? Seven months. Seven months. So, so you live in the house and she's your tenant who also lives in the house Correct. as well. Okay. And when was the last time you saw her? her it would have been uh, the Thursday. The Thursday oh. that just passed? Or mm -hmm. the, in the... Oh, the, the prior third, so yeah, like the before, 18th. Before long weekend. Oh, okay, okay. okay. And, and so sorry, do you know she was seeing somebody or did you... No, 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 we... No, she was living with me and... With her daughter? Mm -hmm. Do you have any suspicions of who or what happened or anything? I have no idea. You don't know? No idea. Do you have a contact number that you'd be willing yeah. to give us? I don't have them. Look at me. I took my you... everything. Look, I, I don't even have the key. Well, I, I, I don't, I, nothing. Are you trying to get back in the house? No, I was curious. Oh. They let, that would tell you what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Um, so, yeah, I was curious. I want to walk down and see what's going on. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. So, are you, where are you planning to go? <laughs> I have no one. I am here on my own. I, like, I have nobody else. Like, I have... <laughs> Many people said that everything he stated was false because of his obvious uneasiness and unpredictable behavior during the interview. Robert could not stay away from the media, he continued to grant interviews over and over mostly when he was drunk. You were kind of the, the primary suspect in this, in this homicide investigation. I still investigation. am. You, you still are. What are your thoughts about that and what are your emotions right now? What, what's kind of going through your head? It's very stressful, but um, I, ho I hope they will be found and um, I hope we can move forward from this. No, we were, we were friends, um, absolutely friends, um, and supported each other. I would like, obviously, for them to be found um, and um, for me to be cleared of this. At that moment, everyone, including the police, was largely persuaded. So, in May of 2019 a few weeks after his release, two undercover police officers became friends with him as Robert made his way home from another drink at the bar. They expressed their concern and support for Robert, saying they had heard that someone had lately given the police evidence against him. The cops just had to earn his trust for four hours before he led them to a small grave next to a road near a woodland. Before formally detaining Robert Leeming, the police there confirmed the remains of Jasmine and her daughter. She and her daughter Aaliyah Sanderson were positively identified as the people buried in the shallow grave. Robert began to talk after being brought in for questioning. According to him, Jasmine had left her daughter with him as usual while she made a quick trip to the grocery store. The cops were able to find a video of Jasmine in the store which could have been the last time she was seen alive on CCTV. It showed Jasmine and her 22-month-old daughter Aaliyah Sanderson in the store. He didn't pay attention until the young girl tumbled down the stairs. Even at that point, he continued to believe she was fine and just put her to bed to help her get over her wounds. Robert came to the conclusion that the fall had been fatal when Jasmine returned home to discover her daughter dead. She was distraught and heartbroken as she argued with Robert, who in the ensuing rage struck her in the back of the head with a hammer. He had gone to get his gun and shot her in the head when he saw she was still alive. One of the more important points was his assertion that the toddler's death was not his fault, despite the fact that he had admitted to killing Jasmine. The detectives were able to see Robert on video buying gasoline into his car and also some into a jerry can which accounts for why there was a strong smell of gasoline at the site where she was found. He was also seen on CCTV the next day at a cannabis store most likely the same day he killed Jasmine and her baby. The day after that, 
He was seen on video dumping evidence from the house into a dump star which was later collected by the detectives. Most of the garbage thrown away was later used as evidence in court. He never anticipated him been caught or seen throwing away all these evidence which tied him to the murder. The final straw was him seen on CCTV driving through a car wash where he tried to clean his car for any sort of DNA whatsoever left by Jasmine and her daughter. Robert has been detained since May of 2019. Despite the fact that his trial began in October of that same year, the circumstances surrounding the murder of Jasmine's daughter have prevented the determination of his sentence. He remains in jail until he learns his fate as regards the punishment of the little baby.